This unsolved dismemberment murder is so baffling authorities never found the victim's head. The mysterious death of Katrine de Costa continues to baffle people 30 years after the fact. 28-year-old de Costa's dismembered body parts were discovered in various parts of Salna, Sweden, on July 18 and August 8, 1984. And no one knows what happened to her or who was responsible for her death. What is known is de Costa was down on her luck, heavily into drugs, and was a sex worker. It always brings a lot of attention when people who got away with murder continue to escape justice, and it's even more disturbing when it involves murderers who dismembered their victims. Katrine de Costa was killed and dismembered, and her head was never found. The last time anyone saw Katrine de Costa alive was on June 10, 1984. Over a month later on July 18, 1984, several of her body parts were found in a trash bag near the Karolinska Institute's Department of Forensic Medicine. Weeks went by and additional trash bags of body parts were found a mile away, later identified through fingerprints as de Costa. The dismemberment of de Costa appeared to have been performed by someone skillful. Her head, genitals, and internal organs have never been found. Costa was last seen on Momskilnadsgaten. During the 70s and 80s, Momskilnadsgaten was known as the main street in Stockholm for sex workers to congregate, sort of the red light district of the city. After business hours, Momskilnadsgaten was wholly abandoned, making it easy for women to conduct business with clients and socialize. It wasn't only a popular location for street walkers, but it was also a place where one would go to buy drugs. 28-year-old de Costa spent most of her nights on Momskilnadsgaten. She was one of many soliciting customers and purchasing heroin. Costa was last seen there on June 10, 1984. Harm was considered an authority on murder and may have gotten away with killing his wife. Right after the discovery of de Costa's body parts, a man went to the police who wanted to talk to them about his former son-in-law, a man named Teed Harm. Harm was a 30-year-old forensic pathologist working at Karolinska Institute, the same location where some of de Costa's body parts were located. The former father-in-law told the police that at one time, Harm was married to his daughter, Anne Catherine, and that in 1982, Catherine had committed suicide by hanging. Not only did the father-in-law believe that Harm was responsible for his daughter's death, but he also suspected that he was guilty of murdering de Costa. The investigators thought that Harm appeared unbothered about his wife's death and it was known to them that Catherine had asked Harm for a divorce shortly before her death. The Swedish police also felt that Harm may have been responsible for Catherine's death. After all, two months after his wife's death, a paper was published that he had written regarding strangulation. The pathologist was considered an expert on subjects such as sexual violence. He was known to favor horror movies and violent pornography, and it was rumored that he was well known as a customer of sex workers. After speaking to the man, the police added harm to their list of suspects in de Costa's death. Two doctors were charged with the murder but court proceedings ended with a mistrial. In addition to investigators looking into Harm as a murder suspect, they were also looking into whether another doctor, Thomas Algen, may have been involved. Algen, a general practitioner, was a known associate of Harm. Algen's wife became convinced that he was sexually abusing their daughter. She claimed that the daughter, who was one and a half years old at the time, claimed to have witnessed both Harm and Algen killing and dismembering a woman. Algen's wife went to the police with the information, and in turn, her child was sent to see a child psychiatrist and a psychologist. Both professionals found the child's claims to be credible. The little girl was quoted as saying, they threw the head away and then the lady was chopped up. Additional evidence against the doctors came in the form of a confession from a married couple who owned a photo lab near the Karolinska Institute. The couple contacted the police stating that in mid-1984, they developed a roll of film that contained photos of a dismembered body. 
The employees of the photo lab were told by the men who turned in the film that they were not to discuss seeing the photographs, that they were part of a secret investigation. The lab owners identified Algen and Harm as the men who turned in the film. It was the testimony of the child coupled with that of the photo lab owners which found the two doctors guilty of the murder of De Costa. However, before the judge was able to announce the guilty verdicts, some jurors were interviewed by the press. The conviction was promptly overturned, and the two doctors were free to go. The doctors were acquitted of the murder during a second trial. After the first trial, a second trial began with new witnesses called on for testimony. One of the witnesses was a friend of De Costa's. Known only as the diary witness. The friend claimed that De Costa spoke about the two doctors and that she didn't have anything nice to say about them. She also turned into Costa's diary as evidence, which has since mysteriously disappeared. In the end, the two doctors were found not guilty. Although it is interesting to note that the court stated beyond any reasonable doubt that Harm and Algen were responsible for cutting up De Costa's body. With all of the missing body parts and organs, investigators were unable to prove how De Costa died, and if she was murdered, therefore, Harm and Algen were acquitted. While many still believe Harm and Algen are guilty of the murder, others feel strongly about their innocence. Many argue that it's preposterous to rely on the testimony of an 18-month-old child in a murder trial, but in the case of De Costa, that was what happened. Some suggest that the two were innocent, but that due to being on the front page of newspapers and associated with the crime, they will always be looked at as guilty, despite being found innocent. Still, others insist the doctors were into nefarious activities, and it's entirely possible they were guilty. Whatever the case, the two men have maintained the same story of innocence. Despite this, they both lost their license to practice medicine and feel as though the trial has ruined their lives. In fact, after the trial, in 1985, Harm attempted to kill himself. He lived through the attempt but ended up losing most of his hearing in the process. Many books and movies have been inspired by the case, the case of Katrine da Costa now referred to as Stigmore de, or, the cutting up murder in Sweden, has been the subject of much debate. Many documentaries and books have been devoted to the case. One of the most well-known books that were inspired by the case is Stieg Larsson's, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. The book was published in 2005 and quickly became a bestseller. In 2011, a film adaptation of the book was made. Who was Katrine de Costa? Katrine de Costa was born in Lulia, on the coast of northern Sweden in 1956. While still in high school, she developed a drug addiction, which she would carry for the rest of her life. After finishing high school, de Costa was homeless and began using heroin. To support her drug habit, she began prostituting herself. In 1979, Da Costa moved to Portugal, where she met and married a man, and they eventually had a child together. The marriage did not last, as Da Costa was never able to get off drugs. She moved back to Sweden, and social services took custody of her child. By 1984, her heroin habit was worse than ever, and Da Costa overdosed on several occasions. It was during this time that De Costa began taking on clients that other sex workers would stay far away from, due to them being untrustworthy or having a history of violence toward sex workers. By July of 1984, De Costa would be dead, and it's highly likely that one of her unsavory clients may have killed her. Katrine De Costa's short and tragic life turned into a mysterious death. Due to Sweden's statute of limitations, no one will ever be charged with the murder of De Costa. The story of Katrine De Costa is one of the most well-known cases in Sweden's history. Despite that, the case was never solved. As of 2009, the unsolved death was closed. July 1, 2009, marked the 25th anniversary of De Costa's death, 
and that is when the statute of limitations ran out. Even if by some miracle the authorities figured out who was responsible for Da Costa's death, the statute of limitations would not allow anyone ever to be tried again for the crime. A Polish butcher may have been responsible for the murder. A few months before Da Costa's death, a man by the name of Stanislaw Gonerka, a butcher, was released from a mental hospital. In 1974, Gonerka killed a woman, cut up her body and put the body parts in trash bags. Just like in DaCosta's death, the victim's head was never found. Even though Gonerka's name came up during the DaCosta investigation because he was hanging around Momskilnadsgaten with sex workers when DaCosta disappeared. Investigators ruled him out as a suspect. Despite the dismissal, Gomerka did not have an alibi for his whereabouts. If he was responsible for Da Costa's death, he took it to his grave. Gonerka died in 1985. What are your thoughts on this story comment down below so we can have a discussion, if you like this video and want more videos similar to this one please like and subscribe, thank you. Goodbye.